regulatory commissions require utilities to provide power to their customers within a specific range of voltages. One reason is that customer equipment is designed to operate within a specific voltage range. Abnormal voltages may damage customer equipment or cause it to operate inefficiently. For example, voltage that is significantly lower than the desired range may cause lights to dim and motors to burn out. Voltage that is significantly higher than the desired range may cause lights or appliances to fail prematurely. The voltage in a transmission and distribution system can be affected by a number of factors, such as load changes or the type of load added to or taken off the system. One way that voltage is maintained within the specified range is by the use of voltage regulators. In this unit, we're going to look at substation voltage regulators, how they work, how they're controlled, and how they're inspected, checked, and isolated for maintenance. The basic function of a voltage regulator is to monitor voltage and maintain it within a preset range. In a substation, a voltage regulator may be a three-phase unit or three single-phase units. It may be a type known as an induction regulator or a step regulator. It may be used to regulate bus voltage or to regulate individual feeder voltage from the substation. Three-phase and single-phase voltage regulators are very similar in how they operate and in how they are controlled. However, a single-phase regulator has fewer mechanisms. For that reason, we'll concentrate on single-phase regulators throughout most of this program. We'll start by looking at how an induction regulator adjusts voltage. An induction regulator changes voltage gradually, whereas a step regulator changes voltage in small steps. This illustration will help us see the relationship of the working components. The main components include a source lead labeled S, a load lead labeled L, a common lead labeled SL for source load, a series winding, and a shunt winding. The source lead, series winding, and load lead are connected in series with one line of the regulated circuit. The common lead is connected to the other line of the regulated circuit. And the shunt winding is connected in parallel with the two lines of the regulated circuit. The shunt winding is wound on a movable core called the rotor.